Hey guys, this is part three of our uh, tribute videos. We're posting a lot of the videos that Scooter Superstores put out there. Uh, they had videos up at Gainesville, Jacksonville. They bought airtime in Atlanta, uh, St. Augustine. Winter Park never uh, really got the videos going, but Hollywood, I see them on TV all the time, and they're great. Uh, I have never seen something so informative, so dead on. Um, the past uh, few years, these have been the best videos that we saw out there, especially from a U.S. retailer standpoint. They uh, inform the public, they tell you about scootering, it talks about the market, about the legacy of Vespa, and they show all the different models, everything from Kimco to SYM is featured on these videos, not just Piaggio Vespa, but um, they genuinely show the passion that was behind uh, the, the Warwick uh, legacy and, and everything he stood about. So uh, enjoy. Welcome back to Two Wheeling. Did you know Harley Davidson made a scooter? No? Well, here it is. I'm here at the Vintage Car Museum in Hollywood, Florida, where they have a great collection of vintage cars and scooters. Let's take a look. Well, here we are at my uh, Muscle Car Museum where I keep a number of my historical vintage Vespas. This is a, uh, about a 1963 Vespa 50. These were very, very popular in Europe uh, because back in those days, they didn't require licensing for the young teenagers to drive. In the metropolitan areas, they were very, very popular because of gas mileage and short hauls. Going back just a few years is a 1965 Grand Lux. This is an original owner, same paint, same color. Uh, the unique thing about this, if you notice the difference between this scooter and this scooter, this is what we call a small body frame and a large body frame. In the United States, the large body frames were extremely popular. This particular Vespa is a 1976 Vespa. This is an American import. As you can see, it has the turn signals. It's not the original color. Next to it is a 1976 European model of the same. This one doesn't have the turn signals on it. This is the original paint job, where this one was repainted as a earlier vintage color of a Vespa. This was the last of the classic series for the time period because Vespa was going into a style change. What's unique about these scooters, they always maintain the same look from the years that Vespa started in 1946 in production. And strangely enough, every time they brought out a new look, these became the classic series and we had the new line series every time we had a change in the model look. This is the Rally 200, which was the highest performing scooter of its time in 1976. Going into the new line scooter in 1977, we introduced the P-Series scooter. This is not the original paint color, but certainly uh, done up for the United States colors. Uh, this is what they call a P125X. And uh, the counterpart to that in the USA was this particular model, the P200E. This blue Vespa P200 here is all original, has about 68 miles on it. It's one of my cherished possessions in my personal collection of Vespas. And then this, of course, is a 1979. Same still classic look to it in what we call the new line in 1977. And uh, this has uh, designed by Piaggio in the United States, a special windshield and a backrest and a back carrier, which was an option on all scooters from, since time began. When Vespa came back to the United States in 2001, they introduced this particular model, the ET4, which was a 150, it also came in a 50. Uh, this was the new line Vespa again in 2001. This is a 2003 special edition called the American Limited Edition. It is built on the P-Series design. This is a PX150 brought into the United States as a limited edition of 500 pieces in 2003. This raised so much uh, popularity and interest with Vespa people in the United States that in 2005, they came in with yet another PX, which would be the last of the series in the United States in 2005. It came in red, black, and silver, and we have one of those in the collection. Stepping back into the New Line series, you have what we call the uh, LX50. Uh, this was done in yellow in 2008, which was a limited edition. Uh, yellow is now out of the lineup, so it winds up in our classic collection of scooters. Next to it is a 
close to original color, azure blue, uh, which was called in the old days a different color blue. It's got some metallic on it. This is the LX150, which we now call the new line of Vespa compared to the classics. And at the time the classics came out, as I said, they were the new line. So we're back at the new line, new line, new line. This is the uh, granddaddy of all Vespas here. This is currently the largest Vespa in the lineup. And this is called the GTS 250. Red, very popular color, very powerful, great riding scooter and it's in our collection because it is the, the last of the new line. And going into 2009, there'll be some other introductions that'll wind up in what I like to call Peter's Garage. This is a very special Vespa. This celebrates the 60th anniversary of the Vespa production in 1946. And some of the features about this, the color of the paint represents one of the colors that was made in 1946. That is why it is painted this particular color. Uh, indicative of those times, the headlight was on the fender. Uh, that is where you get the name Fender Light Vespa. Although this is a little bigger, better lighted uh, for today's times, this is what it represents. Uh, you have the open style handlebar, the pillion seats. Um, this particular scooter was brought in, I believe, 400 units of this in the United States, or limited edition. Uh, very representative of what is today is still available in the line, the GTV model, which comes in Portofino green and a few other colors. There's very few of them, um, and certainly befitting to be in a museum because it does represent 60 years of continuous manufacturing of Vespa, going all the way back to the first production year. I'd like to thank you for sharing this time with us on this show today. And I'd like to thank you for walking down memory lane with me in my vintage museum of scooters. Uh, some of my cars in the background that you've seen. And from all of us at the Scooter Superstore of America and all our stores and all our people, we wish you a happy and safe scootering experience. As you can see, the world of two-wheeling wouldn't be complete without motor scooters. And when you consider how fuel efficient, how inexpensive to maintain and drive, and how much fun they are, shouldn't a motor scooter be a part of your lifestyle? Thanks for watching Two Wheeling, and thank you to Scooter Superstore of America for sponsoring the show. I'm Morgan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road.